I'm going to be talking about a subject tonight that everybody loves to talk about. I'm going to talk about death. Uh, there's a lot in the Word. I've really been searching it out. And uh, Christ came to save us from hell, but he saved us from eternal death. And death has been annulled, the Bible says in uh Timothy. So the first scripture I want, I want to turn to uh, tonight is that uh, we will find, let's go to John 8, 51 and 52, St. John chapter 8, and uh, let's listen to what Jesus has to say about this subject. This salvation that we have is awesome. No wonder the Hebrew writer said that uh, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? And the more I investigate and read in the Word of God, this great salvation that Christ has provided for us uh, is awesome. I, I don't think we've, we've touched a whole lot of it yet. I believe once the spirit of wisdom and, 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 and revelation really begins to operate in the church and God just pulls the veil off of, of everything and we just see the glory of God, we just see that everything he has done for us is way beyond anything that we could even imagine. We're just going to see something that's, that's great. Now, Let's read that. I assure you. Now, who is speaking? Jesus. Jesus is speaking. He says, I assure you, most solemnly, I tell you, if anyone observes my teaching, lives in accordance with my message, keeps my words, he will by no means ever see and experience death. Now, just concentrate on that statement for a moment. Now, there's a condition to it. We see the condition. Live in accordance with my message. We do that by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we keep his word. We don't run around uh, resenting people or talking about people. We, we're through with sin. Sin's been dealt with by the cross. Amen? And our mind is on holiness now. Our mind is on his righteousness that he's imputed to us. And we, that person will never see death. Now we have to understand that when the body quits breathing, the New Testament says that saint has go, is asleep. Okay? That's what the New Testament calls death, asleep. But we know that that's, the spirit of that person is going to heaven. So all of us who are in Christ will never see death. Say, I'll never see death. How can you say that? How can you say that? Let it right there. Jesus said, I tell you, assuredly, solemnly, I'll tell you the truth. You will never see death. Now let it sink in, because we've been so programmed that we're going to die. No, we're going to live. <laughs> Christ came, he died in our place where we could live in his, by his life, okay? So, if the doctor says to you, and I know that uh, there's, um, our dear sister just came in, she just visited our dear sister, and supposedly they said that she's going to uh, die within, what, three, three months? Uh, three months, three months. No, she's going to live in three months. Because Jesus said, let's read what we got up there. They will never see or experience death. Oh, I know this, in our logic mind, we just don't know how to handle that. Because it's too radical for the natural mind to understand that, that, that concept. But yet, that's what Jesus did when he came and he died in our place. And now we live by the life of another. 
And so once you understand it, it's, it's awesome. Now let's move on to the next verse real quick, like. <coughs> now the Jews were just, the Pharisees and the Jews, the scribes, they were just thrown back at this. The Jews said to him, now we know that you are under the power of a demon. Insane. Abraham died, and also the prophets. Yet you say, if a man keeps my word, he will never taste of death into all eternity. So we don't have to dread death. We have to appreciate life and look forward to that continued resurrected life that we just walk out of the body and into heaven. All right, let it sink in that brain. Let that brain absorb that. Because there's so much in the scriptures on this now. <clears throat> Let's see now. I want you to turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. Taking my time, we're in no hurry. First Thessalonians chapter four, verse thirteen. A lot of people struggle with the word rapture. We know the word rapture is not in the Bible but it's an English word that we use to describe the caught up or snatched up to meet the Lord in the air, okay? So it's an English word that we use in saying snatched up one day, we call it rapture. Now let's read what Paul is talking about here. Now, <clears throat> you've got to understand why Paul's addressing something. Uh, what is he addressing here to these Thessalonians? What is he trying to get them to understand as he writes this letter, as he writes the Word of God? What is he trying, what's the problem? What problem are they having? Or here's the problem that they're having. What happens to our loved ones when their body dies? All right, can you, you understand that? Say, when you read this, you must understand why he's talking like this. And here's what he says, now also, we would not have you ignorant, brothers and sisters. Well, they must be ignorant about something. Today, people, and we don't say this mean, like you're stupid. People need to be taught. They don't know the Word of God. That's why you need teachers and pastors that have the spirit of wisdom and revelation on them that can interpret this scripture where you can understand it. Okay? Okay? So he says, I don't want you to be ignorant. About what, Paul? About those that have previously fallen asleep. Oh, fallen asleep. What is he talking about? Well, we say those that have previously died. But he says, no, those that have previously fallen asleep. I don't want you to be ignorant about those folks. Now listen to what he says. I want you to be ignorant, brother, about those who fall asleep in death, that you may not grieve for them as the rest do. Now we'll get back to that just a little bit. Who have no hope beyond the grave. All right, let's break that down. He doesn't want us to be ignorant of those that, that have previously fallen asleep because they were wondering, where's my, where's my father? Where's my uncle, my aunt? They trusted in Jesus. Uh, and they've died. Paul said, no, no. They're, they're falling asleep. And I don't want you to be ignorant about this, but, and I don't want you to grieve. Now, it's natural that, I'm sure that uh, when people in our family pass away, there's a grieving process. We understand that that's the natural part of us that's going to grieve for them. Yet we are not ignorant. And we can say, 
they not hear, for he has risen, or they have risen. That body that's in that casket, oh yeah, we fix him up pretty and all that. They got the beautiful dress on, the best suit, went out and bought a suit, fixed them all up, put all that makeup on them, made them look like they were about ready to be resurrected. And then we shut the lid, put them in the ground. Oh, we should have done that when I was alive. <laughs> Now, I, I'm not mocking that. Don't get me wrong. But I think we need to change our attitude about some things here. We need to see the great salvation that we have. We need to see death has no power over us. Death has been annulled, done away with for the Christian. O oh, death, O oh, oh, sin, O no. oh, death, where is thy sting? In other words, the sting has been taken away. O grave, where is thy victory? What does that mean in 1 Corinthians chapter 15? 58 to think. What, what does that mean? It means that death don't have no sting. Grave? Bob ain't in that grave. You're not in that grave. You'll never be in a grave. Our loved ones that love God, they're not out there in the grave. They're more alive than we is. I have to say they're more alive than some saints. Anyway, we'll go that way. Is that not true? They are really alive. So, three months, start really living. Paul said to die is gain. Paul, what do you know about death that you could say it's gain? That's what Paul said in Philippians. But for you folks, it's more important for me to stand around because I need to stay around to teach you guys something. That's what Paul is saying. Thank you, Paul, that you did. But as far as he was concerned, it's gain to me. Hallelujah. Can you say that? Are we still so connected with this world and the things that we have that we wouldn't want to leave them? Because you're going to leave them. I've never seen I've never seen a hearse pull a U-Haul trailer to the to the graveyard yet. All that beautiful furniture. I mean, I'm not knocking it. I you know, and I Paul says it's dunk. What's dunk? Tell us what it is, Willie. It's dunk, right? <laughs> Hey, I got myself in that trap. You walk out of it yourself, Bob. Folks, I'm trying to blow our minds in a little bit here. To, hey, it is not gloom. It's wonderful. Yeah, you'll miss me or I'll miss you. You'll get over it. Another year you'll be married again. Never did understand what I saw in that last, last person anyway. Some of you are laughing on that. You will never see death. Get over it. Get over it. Now, look what it says. Now, also, we would not you have you ignorant. If you're ignorant of that, you have no hope. You're living in despair. You're fearful of death. Eat and drink and be merry. For the day we live, hallelujah, hallelujah, Past the beer and the banana pudding for the day we live and tomorrow we die. And that's the end of it. No, you're ignorant, brother. That's the beginning of it. Throughout eternities of eternities, you're either going to spend eternities in hell. That's not God's will. It's not God's will for any man to verse. But all should come to repentance and receive this wonderful gift of eternal life. It's a free gift. So, for as far as I know, all you folks are Christians, you'll never die. Mary, you won't die. No, you'll live. Now, how many want to take this body with you? Raise your hand. You want to take this body? Hmm? I never did like this hairdo anyway, did you? That I have on my head. I'm ready for a new hairdo. I tell you, it's awesome. We will never die. Look what it says now. 
<clears throat> who fall asleep in death, that you may not grieve for them as the rest do. Who's the rest? The unbelievers and probably some Christians because they don't know, they're ignorant. That death is the beginning of a glorious experience into the eternities of eternities with God. Folks, let me tell you something. I, I know we've all, in some degrees, have touched the Spirit of God, but some of us have touched the glory a little bit heavier than others, and all we can do is say, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Once you see the glory of God, the glory of heaven, the glory of the splendor of the majesty of God, everything down here is, like Paul says, what's another word for that? <laughs> you are so elegant, Willie. Waste. Uh, we'll settle for that until I can find a better word. Man, so Paul does not want us to grieve as the unbelievers or those that are backslidden do who have no hope beyond the grave. We have a great hope beyond the grave. In fact, our life is just going to begin in a way after the grave. When we get in our, especially when we get in our glorified bodies. Praise God, I can eat all the cookies I want and won't gain weight. Pass the banana pudding in the ice cream, Willie. Now that's my imagination of being a human being, being spilled out on you there. Turn to Hebrews 2.14, real quick, like 2.14. i got to get moving here. i got only 250 scriptures to share with you tonight before I let you go. Oh, well, i got plenty of scriptures to back all this up. Since therefore... These, his children, share in the flesh and blood in the physical nature of human beings. He himself, that is Christ, in a similar manner, partook of the same nature. He became, the word became flesh, incarnated into us. Into, uh, in, uh, incarnation, that, that he uh, became flesh. He might bring to naught and make of no effect him, that's the devil, who had the power of death, that is the devil. So he took care of what the devil did. He went through death for us to nullify death and to make and to defeat the enemy. He did that through death. Through death he might destroy him that had the power. Look at 15 now. And also that he might deliver and completely set free all those who through the haunting fear of death, meditate on that, were held in bondage throughout the whole course of their lives. Now, let's keep that on the board just for a little bit. And also that he might deliver and completely set free. He wants us to be set free of this fear of death. Because if you have that fear of death, you are in bondage throughout your whole life. You're fearing something that you will never experience. Hello, are you out there? If you're out there, wave at me. Oh, a lot of people out there. Oh, we need to just look at that for just a little bit. Let that sink in. And also that he might deliver and completely set, who, who, he, that is Christ, might deliver and completely set free. Now, he wants us to be set free tonight and not worry about death. Because you ain't going to die. I don't care what the doctor says. You ain't going to die. Oh, your body may quit functioning. You don't have to get sick to die at a certain point. You'll just give up the ghost. You just, your spirit will just depart. 
I was talking to a person one time, and, and I said, you know, you don't have to be sick to die. I was, how are you going to die? You don't have, get out of your mind that you've got to get sick to die, because you ain't going to die. I think it was Jacob blessed his children and his grandchildren, laid back, and gave up the ghost. Jesus said, into thy hands, I, de I, deli I think it's like I deliver my spirit or I yield my spirit or whatever. And uh, Stephen said the same thing. Receive my spirit. In, in chap Acts chapter uh, 7, verse 50-something there, he says, receive my spirit, Lord Jesus. Yeah, they killed his body. They couldn't touch his spirit. Sickness, death, whatever, nothing. Jesus conquered it all for us. Let's read that again. And also that he might deliver and completely set free all those who through the haunting fear of death were held in bondage throughout the whole course of their lives because they were ignorant of what the Lord has done. How many understand that? Raise your hand. Very good. Okay. We'll move to the next then. We're not in no hurry. We're just going to just enjoy this. I want you to turn to Matthew 27. It's really not a new thing about people. Matthew 27, verse 50. I tell you, this is awesome. <clears throat> Let's start out with verse 50. All right, yeah, we're there. All right, this is, this is an account of, of Jesus being crucified. He's on the cross, and it says, And Jesus cried again with a loud voice, and notice, and gave up his spirit. He discharged his own spirit from his body. Nobody takes my life, I give it, Jesus said. When the work was done, salvation was procured, accomplished. He says, I'm getting out of here. And he gave up his own spirit and come out of that body. And of course, we know he preached in Hades for Three days, I think it was. He went down into Hades and preached down there and then was resurrected. Okay, next verse, 51. And at once the curtain of the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. Now, let's concentrate. Remember, we read that scripture a while ago. You've got to learn to connect scripture with scripture. You've heard people say, dot the I's across the T's. You've got to bring scriptures in line, dot them, relate them to one another. Who made a way for us to come to the throne of God? Okay, let's say Jesus did, God did. Well, right there is where he, he at once the curtain of the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, so... This curtain is 10 inches or, or 12 inches thick. I mean thick. Big curtain. It was split from top to bottom. Only God could split that curtain, folks. And he did it and made a way for us to come into his presence now without fear and come boldly to come to the throne to receive the help and grace in time of need. He did that for us. That's part of our salvation right there, okay? Now, this happened right there when Jesus gave up his spirit. God made a way, split that curtain where we could come in. Now, that's in the natural realm that we see. But we go to the spiritual sanctuary in heaven and realize that we can go to the throne of God, which is in heaven now, okay? All right, let's go to the next verse. Now, this is something that is powerful. The tombs were open, 
and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep in death was raised to life. We were, Lois and Susan and me were discussing that scripture this morning. And Susan said, well, uh, did the graves open? Did the tombs open? Or did they just come through? Or through the tomb? Okay? Let's look at it. The tombs were open, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep. And who were these? Let's ask the question. Well, who were these saints? All right. Tell me. <coughs> Excuse me. Abraham, Isaac, a lot of the prophets. Now, it didn't say all of them. It said many bodies, many of them. Now, we know at that time, their, their, their spirits was kept in Hades, down in, under the earth. You have two apartments. One apartment was hell. That's where the rich man went. You remember the, uh, Jesus is talking about the rich man and the poor man passing away? You remember that in Luke uh, 16, I think it is? And uh, down in the underworld, there was two compartments. One was called Abraham Bosom. That was the, basically the known paradise for the Old Testament saints. And then those that were over there in the flame, and there was a big gulf between the two, okay? Abraham's bosom over here were the uh, saints that believed in God during the Old Testament times was kept. Over here at this big gulf, you couldn't pass from one to the side to the other, and was the compartment of of what we call hell, okay? And Jesus went down in that part there where the uh, Old Testament saints that believed in God and had faith in God uh, and preached to them. But anyway, their spirits evidently came up and got into their bodies here again while, while that was taking place, and they were raised to life. Now, this question, I don't, I, I would say, and I'm going to say it, and I may be wrong, but I believe they were in their probably glorified bodies at that time. If you believe otherwise, that, that's okay. But look what it says in verse 53. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection. So remember, Christ was the first fruits. The first one that was raised from the dead and then these saints there, which you see there, that we're talking about, was resurrected and came out of their tombs. And they went into Jerusalem and done, had done some missionary work. Can you imagine your home, you're, you're eating, you know, uh, breakfast perhaps, and somebody knocks at the door, and you go to the door and you open it, and it's your grandfather. And he passed away, you know, 15 years ago, and there he stands at your door, and you say, <laughs> be a big shock, wouldn't it? I mean, I think things are going to change from here on in. Something is going on in Jerusalem. <laughs> oh, boy. I think some folks need a shock like that. And coming out of the tomb after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many people. And all of that is God's love to try to wake people up, to let them know that there is a resurrection, that God is the God of life, liberty, freedom, excitement, power. Not gloom and despair. Happiness, joy, peace. Happy is the man, envious is the man whose sins and transgressions have been forgiven, set free of the bondage of the fear of death. Woo! Powerful, powerful. All right, let's move to the next one. Let's stop, let's stop there. 
Well, let's read this. This is good. When the centurions and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, observed the earthquake and all that was happening, they were terribly frightened and filled with awe and said, truly, this was God's son. So it took an earthquake for those folks to believe that Jesus was. And some folks are this, that way. They got to be shaken with an earthquake. Well, if it takes that, God can handle that too. <laughs> Aren't you glad you can come by faith? Uh, he's given you the faith to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. So we see a, a resurrection there. Now, let's go back. Let's go back to uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 again. We'll, time's going by so fast and we'll probably have to close on this. I ain't got started yet. Now also we would not have you ignorant, and Paul's talking, brethren, about those who have fallen asleep in death, that you may not grieve for them as the rest do, the unbelievers who have no hope beyond the grave. The unbeliever has no hope uh, for blessings or being with God. I mean, it's it's just, it's just horrible. But we don't have to have that fear in our heart. We know where we're going. We know what our future is. Go to the next verse. Now, as we go to the next verse, I ask the question, why is Paul addressing this issue of where the dead is? You remember what I said that? Why is he addressing this issue? All right, because he knows that many of them have the fear of death. They want to know, what happened to my loved ones that died? You understand that? When you read that, you, you, for since we believe that Jesus died and rose again. How many believe that? Raise your hand. You believe that? Okay, you better believe that. If you don't believe that, you ain't got no hope after the grave. Downhill all the way. Even so, God will also bring with him, that is Jesus, through Jesus, those who have fallen asleep in death. Now, I want to ask you a question. If he's going to come from heaven, and, there, and those that uh, have previously passed away are going to come with him, how did they get up there for him to bring them with him? Hmm. I mean, you don't know. I mean, you don't know. Oh, I'm about to tell you. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. When you, your body quits functioning, then you're going to depart. Dismiss yourself. Excuse me, Bob, I'm heading up. Uh, they're going to put you in the ground. But I'll come back later and... Uh, I won't exactly get you. Uh, the Lord will change you into a glorified body, and then I'll uh, claim that glorified body and go into you, and then whoop, go to be with the Lord. Simple, not complicated to God. All right, look what it says now. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will also bring with him through Jesus, those who have fallen asleep in death. How many believe that? All right, very simple. You believe one and you believe two. If you believe that Christ died and rose again, then you need to bring that, uh, believe that he will bring those that have previously uh, fallen asleep in Christ, which went up to heaven, so he's going to bring the, all of us back to claim our bo resurrected bodies. All right, so he's, he's outlining this for us. All right, next verse. For this we declare to you, Paul is speaking, by the Lord's own word. Oh, my goodness. Paul, where did you get all this information from the Lord? From the resurrected Lord. Paul is the disciple or the teacher to the, to the Gentiles. And when he was in, a, uh, uh, in Arabia for three years, the Lord talked to him and gave him mysteries and revelation of a lot of things that the other apostles didn't know. Now, you read your Bible, you know what I'm talking about, okay? 
He talked about the body of Christ. He talked about the mystery that, we, that we've been uh, uh, rooted and, 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 and uh, grounded with, with the, in the Jewish covenant with the Jews. Out of the two, he makes one man. And now there's neither Jew nor uh, Greek or Gentile, only one man in Christ. All right, you know your Bible, you know what I'm talking about. For this we declare to you by the Lord's own word. Paul received it by the Lord himself. That we, we Christians who are alive and remain on the earth until the coming of the Lord. Now we're not talking about the second coming. The second coming of Christ is also in, in the Old Testament. Are you out there? It's in the Old Testament, and it's also in the New Testament in uh, Revelation chapter 19. When the Lord comes back on white horses, and we're going to come back riding white horses. I can see, I can see Willie now on that. Oh, I tell you, that's going to be great. Ha-ha! <laughs> Let's race, Willie. <laughs> oh, my wife says, I don't want to ride no horse. I'm going to stay in heaven, and we're going to go down and clean the earth. <sighs> Revelation 19, we don't have time to go into that. Look what it says. And we are alive. So that means there are going to be Christian people alive on the earth when the Lord comes back. Not on white horses. He's coming in the air. And we're going to meet him in the air and ever be with the Lord throughout eternities of eternities. That's our great hope. That's our great hope. All right, let's finish this now. Shall in no way proceed into his presence or have any advantage at all over those who have previously fallen asleep in him in death. In other words, those that are in the grave, they will rise first, and they will come out and be, have a resurrected body. Their spirit is coming back with the Lord. The Lord's coming down, and all, all those that have previously passed away, their spirit is coming back. Remember, when they passed away, they were absent from their body, and present with the Lord, and now they're coming back, and God has done a miracle and resurrected their bodies to a, a glorified body, and they will go into their glorified body, and then that we are alive at that moment when that happens, instantly in the twinkle of an eye, we will be changed in our glorified body, and they will all go back to heaven, be, we'll be caught up in the air, and go back to heaven with God for seven years. Why, down here they'll have seven years of tribulation, and we will have seven years up there at the marriage supper. You know, the Jewish people, when they got married, they, they uh, celebrated for seven days. How many of you know that? Seven days. Wow. <laughs> they know how to celebrate, I tell you that. All right. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Let's go to the next verse. Mm -hmm. Now here's the scene. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven. Descend from heaven. You remember over in the book of Acts when he ascended? Now he's descended it here for a reason, to get us children, get the family of God, get us out of this mess down here. You see, we've been saved from the wrath of God. See, the wrath of God's going to be poured out during this tribulation years. So he don't want his children getting in all that wrath stuff. We've been saved. Romans uh, tells us that, or Ephesians tells us that uh, in chapter 5, verse 9. So we've been saved from the wrath. Well, who, who took the wrath for us? We should have had the wrath. Who took the wrath for us? Jesus. He took the wrath and the wrath for us. Wow. And I can't serve him? Read my lips. 
24-7, I'm going to serve him. Best friend you'll ever have, I tell you that. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a loud cry of summons, with the shout of an archangel, and with the blast of the trumpet of God. Uh, Frank usually blows the trumpet at this time. <laughs> wake up, Frank, wake up. <laughs> And those who have departed this, I, that's a little weak, Frank. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. All right. And those who have departed this life in Christ will rise first. Now we're talking about their body resurrection here. Their bodies will rise first, and of course, I think it'll be changed while it's in the grave, and their resurrected bodies will come, for, come out of the grave. Now, the question is, is they going to make a big hole there, or are they just going to go uh, through uh, the ground? Okay? Either way, I'll take it. Okay. Whatever you think, go for it. But we coming up. Yep, I got all that concrete on my father. Don't make no difference if you got an Empire State Building built on top of him. He's coming out by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. There's a song, there ain't nothing going to hold me. What, to this, whatever? Okay, let's move on. <clears throat> and those who have departed this life in Christ, see, it's, someone says, uh, uh, I love that. Depart this life, notice what's that, in Christ. Remember, we were talking about how important it is to be in Christ? Yeah, well, we're going to depart this life in Christ. That's why we're going to depart. I love it. We'll rise first. Okay, we got that. All right, let's go to the next verse. Then we... Who's we? Us that are alive. The living ones who remain on the earth shall simultaneously be caught up or raptured up. That's that word, uh, caught up, snatched up. I mean, you ever seen an eagle come down? I love it. And he comes right over that water. Got him a big bass. Snatch him right up. Airborne. So, we will be caught up along with the resurrected dead, that is, those bodies, in the air. And so always through the eternities of eternities, we shall be with the Lord. Now, who's, if you think this life down here is it, go, and I know you don't, but this tape goes out, go for it. But I got my eyes on the Lord. And all the promises of God and all that he's prepared for us. You might be going through a little sad time now. Ain't nothing. All of these troubles down here are nothing compared to the glory that shall be ours. This is what God has done for us. All right, go to the next verse. Therefore, Comfort and encourage one another with these words. How many people, and I'm going to put you on the spot, have you encouraged with these words? What words? The words that we just read. Hello? Anybody out there? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Encourage each other with these words. I hope I've encouraged you tonight with these words that you don't have to fear death all your life. God conquered that through Christ Jesus our Lord. He suffered death 
that we might live, I mean really live, in him. What a marvelous father we have, a marvelous God. And everybody down here mostly sees him all wrong. He conquered sin. He conquered death. He conquered everything. But it's so hard to believe. It's so good. Start believing it. Son, are you going to die? I didn't hear you. What did he say? That's right. That's what Jesus said. I ain't going to call Jesus a liar. I'll tell you that right now. No way. All right, we got one minute, and we're going to end with this one. It's only three pages long, so it won't take long. But I forgot what I was going to say now. Oh, yeah. Philippians. Yeah, I'm right there. Chapter 3, verse 20. All right, are you there? It's on the board, and we're going to quit. Time to run out. Believe me, I have not run out of scriptures. I've got pages of them. But we are citizens of the state, the commonwealth, homeland, which is in Goose Creek. And my address is 1519 Foster Creek Road. What? Homeland, which is in heaven, and from it also we earnestly and patiently await the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, as Savior. See, our full salvation will come. Now listen to me, and I don't have time to turn the scripture to it, but I got scripture on it. Our full salvation is when we come into our glorified bodies. In fact, the next verse, you'll see your full salvation. Are you ready? Verse 31. Who will transform and fashion anew the body of our humiliation. These bodies humiliate us. You know, when they get old, you know, you're walking around, you know, 95 years old, no teeth. <laughs> now, Sonny, I'll tell you right now, you mess with Grandpa, you're going to get it. Oh. <laughs> How many want to live that long? <laughs> okay. Go for it. <laughs> Oh, I have known people, Lord, take me home. How many ever prayed that prayer? Okay. All right, listen to this. Who will transform? Who will transform us? Where do we see that in the Bible? First Thessalonians chapter 4, remember? He will what? Transform our bodies, a resurrected body. That's it, right there. A new, the body of our humiliation to conform, and those catch this, to and be like the body of his glory, just like Jesus in his resurrected body. We will have a body just like him. And majesty by exerting that power which enabled him even to subject everything to himself. The power of the Holy Ghost will cause all this to happen. One more scripture real quick, like found in Romans 8.30. Romans 8.30, here we go, and then we'll let you go. And those whom he thus foreordained, he also called, and those whom he called, he also justified, that's us, by the way, acquitted and made righteous, putting them into right standing with God. We're free. We're free. We're free. Everybody say, I'm free. I'm free. Don't let the pressures of the things of the world make you think you're in bondage. You're free. I said, you're free. Yeah, yeah say it, free. Free, free. Say, I'm free. I'm free. I'm free, I'm free. I'm free from death. I'm free. I'm free from the bondage of the fear of death. He that the Son is set free is free indeed. Stand fast in that liberty wherewith Christ has set you free. Yeah. Scriptures. Look what it says. Putting them into right standing with the and those whom he justified. Who's that? That's us. He also glorified, raising them to a heavenly dignity and condition or state of being. 
That's that resurrected body. Boy, catch it, say, don't let that escape your eyeballs. Woo! Somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wow. A state of being, feeling good all the time. Don't have to wait for the bus. I think I'll go over and see Sister So-and-so. There I am. Knock, 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 knock. Going over the door, I'll just walk through it. <laughs> am I too far out in the right? Is this sermon too far out to the right for you? How do you know I'm preaching truth? Even though it's hard for you to believe, just get into the Word, take the Scriptures down, get the DVD, check the Scriptures out yourself. And if I'm wrong, I'll back up. But i got many more Scriptures. Folks, we're only passing through. Our real citizenship is in heaven. God's going to bring us into a state of being. Hard for our minds to imagine. Imagine it. Yeah, but I'm going through. I know you are sometimes. We all go. I've been through my Gethsemane's more than once, I think. But it's working for us a much more great of glory, a much more greater weight of glory. Father, we thank you that all unbelief goes, that we might see what the Lord has done and rejoice that we are in Christ Jesus, and because we are in Christ Jesus, all of the promises of God are yea and amen in him. Give him praise right now. Thank you, Lord, for all that the Lord has done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you and have a good afternoon.